exactly what do you think about the future of this SRV6, Sigma routing V6 data plane? Would it increase the adop adoption of IPv6 in the networks? So what do you think about SRV6 future? So do you think people should invest? And second part, would it increase the adoption of IPv6 in networks? So indirectly, it could. If we look at history of SRV6, idea was great, the implementation perhaps not so. It has become a very expensive technology in terms of ASIC processing, in terms of amount of overhead, and unfortunately, it has become a religious discussion. I mean, it's, it's very poisonous topic, actually, right? Because I would argue that initial implementation, the way extension headers were designed and where data was put in wasn't really optimal. So what we see now, there are some additional proposals on no, no, so SRV6 plus an M, some other. So people are trying to mitigate it. And now it's not discussion about technology anymore. It's a religious discussion. My implementation is better than yours and my is bigger than yours, right? So it, it's a very tough situation in general. Practically, I see the best implementations today done actually on the host. So there is a large provider in Japan line. They actually describe how they use SRV6 on the host. They use it in a way VMware would use Geneva. So there's a lot of places you could put some metadata that describe some particular type of service, particular application, many things. So they're using it such a way that on the application, so endpoints know that SRV6, but the rest of the public is just IPv6. And I believe, so in general, kind of keeping complexity at the edge, it's a good idea. Public should be simple. I think this is where we will see first applications of a service. I know there are like two or three networks that run today, service six, probably SoftBank, one of them, there's someone in Canada. But I would argue that it was more political than technical decision. They were preparing together with Clarence. So he was talking about the SoftBank deployment and they did, right? Yeah. yeah, so they did, but there are many things that are unknown about throughput, about what ASIC, I mean, we know what ASIC is run, but what's inside mm -hmm. of that ASIC, probably not what they think it is. So there's significant costs that you incur when you implement it. The question whether your business or additional value that your business would create with this overhead is justifiable. If it is, absolutely. If it's just political discussion, and again, my technology is better than yours, it's a pretty bad situation. It's not exactly Apple to Apple comparison, SRMPLS, SRV6. There are many differences absolutely. for sure. But if you would just, let's say, for the transport purpose, if you would compare SR, MPLS, SRV6, what you would say? SR, MPLS. So MPLS is one of the greatest technologies invented. If you think about how it abstracts notion of an IP address, how indirection works, how you scale by, by putting more labels, it's really... It's absolutely great technology. So this is another efficient. religion, religious discussion, definitely. Some people don't don't love, even hate about MPLS, but uh, mm -hmm. MPLS and BGP are really great, in my opinion, as well. Sorry for that. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, the term MPLS was poisoned by SD1. SD1 had nothing to do with MPLS. SD1 was replacement for a VPN service, right? Not, not for MPLS. MPLS encapsulation of the service. So... There's a lot of misunderstanding of what MPLS is. MPLS is encapsulation. Actually, actually, so, but, that, this but, question but, was but, there but, as well, and uh, I didn't want to ask, but uh, it's good that you started MPLS. When we say SD WAN, is it replacing MPLS, etc.? Please go ahead. <laughs> it doesn't. It replaces service pro service provider provided VPNs. They could be done over MPLS, IPsec, Pigeons, you name it, right? So the I think what, why people think this way, because the most significant driver for MPLS to become what it is today was replacement of frame-related VPNs, physical VPNs, pretty much, right? So that's why people kind of mix this two terms. But on itself, encapsulation has nothing to do with services you provide over it. So SD1 replaces VPN service there, not the transport layer. Yeah. So yeah, of course, the customer... So back to seven routing. Exactly. Uh, go, go ahead. So, uh, SRV6. MPLS, data plane is used in SRV6, as you know. So the pendulum always goes completely away. So in one case, you 
have all the information in the network. On another case, you remove all the information from the network. And SR in PLS is this another side of the pendulum. So we removed all the information from the network, right? Only Edge knows how to get to another side. It imposes the SR stack, and here you go. So why it's so good? It's very efficient because it's in PLS encapsulated. In PLS, structure-wise, the how label and how a PLS header looks like, it's very, very efficient. It's greatly designed. So SRPLS levers this very, very efficient encapsulation to provide this functionality. In some cases, I particularly dislike LDPS protocol. It's a hacky protocol. It has always been problematic. We've been fixing bugs in LDP since it existed. It never fully converts, it's always buggy. So replacing it with something better is a completely great idea. LDP was built to be synchronized with IGPs because if you don't have a route for a label buying, you'll black hole, right? So there are so, so many interdependencies, create so many complexities and bugs in the code. It, we never fully recovered. There are still problems in LDP, you would be surprised, it's been running for 15 years. So replacing it with something better is an amazing idea. Our last question anyway will be LDP, RSVP, SR, which one, why, etc. Yeah. You are answering, but we, we will do this discussion there as well. Uh, yes, uh, what he was just talking, there was very important point. Let me just uh, emphasize that IGP, LDP synchronization, especially lots of service providers, which I know, they, are, they have LDP and they have this feature as well. Basically, we have in order to overcome the black holing, when you have LDP and IGP network, IGP, LDP synchronization and LDP session protections, those two features. This is uh, when we compare the LDP and the segment routing, the immediately segment routing guys, they will tell you when you have LDP, you have to synchronize and the synchronization or Rust, I think, call it surface and sometimes I call it protocols should follow each other. Basically, if in, in case of failure, you have, let's say, IP route, IGP converged, but LDP not yet. So you will see black hole because on that link there should be label as well. So that's why LDP has to wait IGP to converge and then IGP should update to the neighbors that okay I can be used as a transit node again. And this is um, actually not only for the IGP LDP, it's for the IGP BGP as well. We have when we use OSPF maximum metric router LSA or when we have ISAS we have overload bit etc. Exactly we are trying to do same thing. IGP has to be synchronized with BGP as well and now just when we use BGP as a single protocol as IGP in the data centers we have a BGP graceful shutdown community very similar to exactly this behavior. You are informing your neighbors that I will go down don't use me as transit but when you use with LDP exactly what Jeff was saying you need to also make sure there is new protocol now and this should be synchronized with the IGP SR we will describe SR more and more there are a couple other questions about SR when we have SR SR labeled in the MPLS data plane case will be advertised within the IGP update so it's not a separate protocol that you need to synchronize sorry Jeff uh, so you reduce this uh, interaction that creates complexity between two different protocols that are distributed so you rely every part of distributed system will do the same thing at the same time, which is absolutely unrealistic, right? Exactly. So as uh, on set about SR control plane, the seeds, the information about prefix itself is distributed simultaneously. So actually in this case you get a global synchronization because at the moment you learn the prefix, you also learn the binding, you know which label to use to get to this prefix, right? Exactly. So you remove level of complexity. So now we removed all the state, suddenly we lost multicast because multicast requires state in order to assure loop free operations. Right? That's why we do RPM. Practically, when you do seven trials, you, you remove all the state from the network, you cannot do label multicast anymore. It's topic for another discussion. We'll probably talk about beer, but in general, there are trade offs always. You remove information. You lose functionality. Right? Oh, there there is always like... removing information also. There is always good and bad things about that. When you remove information, we can now converge maybe faster. We can have less complexity. Troubleshooting might be better. But exactly when you remove that information, what you said also as a cons, as a disadvantage, 
So maybe suboptimal routing, maybe other functionalities will not work and you need to have new protocol. So let me wrap up this question for the SRV6. You said so far implementation was not good, getting maybe better. Extension header, especially because of the extension header, I think there is compression for the extension header now. What about the security concern with the extension headers? As you probably know, some time ago, we as networking community decided not to use extension headers for source routing, right? Why? It was so insecure, it was yeah. so full of holes. Actually, anyone could send you a packet and influence the way it's going to traverse. So everybody stopped producing RFC and everything else. So now, and I think we've been discussing this for the last couple of years, how do you ensure that SRM V6 information doesn't leak outside of your domain. How do you make sure that someone who is outside of your domain actually can inject data into your domain? A lot of these questions are not answered yet, so there's some logical definition of an operational domain such as an IS or something else. Practically, I think we will, when it get deployed at scale, we will see the same issues as we see today with BGP. Some people just don't care about security. Some people don't care about doing anything about it and will just happy propagate whatever you send them and don't blame you. It seems so I think that, like me, I you think also that, scare a little bit about SRV6 at the moment. Yeah, that's what we see BGP hijacks every two weeks, right? <laughs> yes. Actually, we hear every two weeks. It's based on the statistics because in one of my trainings also, I'm covering RFC 7908, route leaks, six type of route leaks, etc. And IJX, sub prefix, exact prefix, hijacks, etc. Every day is happening. But what we hear when especially famous networks get involved, like Google was there last in 2019, Level 3 was there and big ones well, I happened. Know. I mean, pretty much everybody large enough not to care, right? <laughs> that is, that's right. And security concerns still there and not that much addressed yet. But still, we are seeing at least a couple production deployment with the SRV6, especially for the cell provider. In my opinion, this, this should be considered very carefully because not only security concern, but also vendor interoperability. Another thing, extension header usage. Another thing, header get, get might get very large. It's another concern with the SRV6. But if you have anything last for the SRV6 question want to say, otherwise, let's move to another question. Yeah, so the technology is interesting and promising. We need to find the right balance. So there's a number of overlay technologies that somewhat compete with this. So NSH, there's a number of encapsulations such as Geneve and Big Sun GP that can provide good placeholder for metadata. So uh, as uh, you know, it's with the so SRV6, yeah. what they advocate that you don't need NSH anymore. With the SRV6, so you don't I would need argue You want to keep layers separated. So. Actually because they, the they can carry the metadata as well there, right? They can carry it. So yeah. why we need extra and other protocol? So let's reduce the complexity. Why we need NSH anymore, etc. By the way, as so an, you, an, as an you idea... you have too much functionality into single technology, you ossify it, you make it rigid, you make it complex. That's why it's always better have separate layers that don't necessarily interact with each other. Why everything then we are placing in BGP? <laughs> Where is the question? Kitchen sink. 